the thing I'm the most worried about for modern fighting games. So, Keeper Security is the leading cybersecurity platform for protecting individuals, families, and businesses against password related cyber attacks. Yep, talking about hackers. These attacks can lead to identity theft, financial loss, and reputational damage. Experts predict too that cyber criminals will increasingly target the gaming industry over the next three years. So with Keeper Security, you can create strong, unique passwords, not the old passwords you've been using since high school, special ones for every account you use where you log in, but you can also keep them stored safely in your own encrypted vault. Visit keeper.io slash beastcoast and use code beastcoast, that's in all caps, beastcoast, for a 30% off promo code. Stay safe out there, my friends. The reason why I have Dragon Ball on was actually during Dragon Ball, I was actually really, really worried about this because of the way this game is. So Dragon Ball is a game that I have like a pretty serious love-hate relationship with because this game does some really good stuff. It's super good for getting new people in to fighting games in general. But this game has a lot of stuff that really worried me. The main thing, more than anything else, is actually how much the devs try to get you to play the game a specific way. And in this game specifically, how much the devs try to muddle and hide how to play the game. So I gotta like explain what do I mean by this. So this game has a few things. It really encourages people to interact the ways the developer wants you to interact. So one example would be the anti-errors in this game. So traditionally, the anti-air in this game is 2H. It's frame four head invincible, but you know, there's so many air options cause you have jump, double jump, super jump float, uh, super dash or stops your momentum instantly. And you have uh, off screen assist calls of all sorts. So when your opponent is jumping, this is basically reserved for speed vanishes and super dash. And besides that, when an opponent is jumping around like this, you basically have what? You can try to be brave and catch them. This is a CPU recording and I'm having problems cat just pulling up by the way. Okay, so you have that as an option. You can super dash, but the way the game is made, you bounce really far and what you have available depends on like your character or something. So basically it's like, if you don't have a character that's specifically good at anti-airs like Broly or something, or if you don't have an assist to help you, this thing is just, you just can't do it. I like a system level. It's a very, very, very common theme in this game. Or another thing is like when you knock people down because of the knockdown system, if you don't have characters, not even assist, because most people would be like, oh, you just do this and then call your assist. Just call your assist. But like on some real shit, if you don't play an assist that helps you do this, or if you don't play a character that helps you do this, you can't do this. Like the game has like super heavy preventative measures like sparking that you always have to fight through. I felt like when I was playing this game, unless I'm playing like a really strong player, I mostly felt like I was playing like the system. Like I, I didn't feel like I was playing my opponents that much. It felt like I was mostly playing the system and I just had to like stop them from abusing the system. This is a really, really, really huge part of this game. And also like anytime someone finds a strategy that is like outside of the game's general plan or like something that's like even mildly reliable strategy, the shit just gets like absolutely deaded so that the game turns to its baseline of like, you hit someone, you knock them down, the knockdown's too strong. The person who just knocked down 50 50s you. If you got it, cool. If you don't got it, you don't got it. You needed characters to do stuff. Not all characters can do stuff. You need specific characters to do stuff. So you can't even play the characters you want to play in tournaments sometimes. You might be like, man, you're saying that you're worried about the devs being like heavy handed with how they balance and make the game, but you like Guilty Gear Strive. That's fucking weird. But there's a really big difference in my opinion with how they did Strive and how they did this game. I much prefer the way they did Strive. Strive actually made me feel better. This game and Grand Blue, even though I liked Grand Blue at the start, I really didn't like the way they balanced Grand Blue. In the middle of Grand Blue, like starting from season two, I started to feel really down. I was like, man, like they went from having a really good, fun game and then they did all this shit because they didn't like what people were doing and they wanted to make sure it was specifically just like this. So I will definitely say that the devs are very careful about this game's balance. 
but the way the game is built from the ground up, since it's not a attribute system game, and it's a hitbox hurtbox interaction type game, like uh, previous Guilty Gear games, because the game is hitbox and hurtbox interactions, the players build out the interactions. You know, every character that's made in a one versus one game is made to do something. Ryu, for example, in Street Fighter is like your mid-range control, but he can zone. He's like a jack of all trades. Soul is a mid suspenser that has like a good mid-range game. Doesn't play good from that far. And when he gets in, he's, he poke throws you to death, right? Again, since the uh, interactions are between hitboxes and hurtboxes, it's up to the players to build out these situations and how matchups should go. Like the devs basically are like, hey, here are these tools, go forth. As opposed to Dragon Ball, where like the devs give you a bunch of tools and the tools are like, you have to use this for this period and nothing else. So Strive actually made me feel a lot better about this thing because I don't have this feeling from this game. Like how many million players have come at me for saying this match is fucking even? While I consistently perform against this character, the important thing is this move that everyone said was broken when a game comes out. What you may not know, one, this move is not disjointed. So what I mean by disjointed is that the hitbox extends past the hurtbox. So moves like that are really hard to deal with. Now this move has a pretty good hitbox. There's a small hurtbox outside of it. He's really vulnerable from the knees and below. And it's not very active as well. I believe it's only two or three frames active. So it's not active for a long time. So you can see this and your brain can process, oh, he did that, right? Now, Milia has this move. This is one of the best two Ks in the game straight up. And her leg is just sticking mad far. So when soul players do this, okay, either I do this where I just get the fuck out because Milia has a fast backdash or I interrupt. Let's say I tried sweep. If I don't do it fast enough, when she does this, her hurt box is actually quite high. Like if you have something that reaches, like you could just hit her and not all characters can do, some characters can do it, some characters can't. You have to build these interactions individually. For me, this is like the truth of the Guilty Gear. If this game didn't have that and everything was attribute system, I would certainly be with a lot of people. But th this type of build, a building that you have to do situationally between hitboxes and neutral is like a really important part of being strong Guilty Gear, at least from my study of the game. So the fact that the game is made like this just made me feel so much better about the general feature of uh, fighting games, you know? Thank God, like Multi Blood Type Lumina, it looks like a combination of current code and MBAC. MBAC is one of my favorite fighting games straight up, but like I feel like a lot of modern fighting games, they just have this element of like the devs really want you to specifically play like this and you have to make choices like this. When the game is a hitbox hurtbox interaction like Strive and Exert XX for previous games, this is one of the main things that stops somebody from becoming like a true expert expert player like i definitely run into people who played guilty gear let's say exert right so they played like xx for a long time and then they played exert and they're just counting on their experience which obviously is a good thing like you should be rewarded for your experience but they would find frustration in playing against me because of how much i focused on this and building this a lot of like the player expression people talk about in games like once you start building out situations like this you start realizing like oh even though, like, let's say I hit Milia's far slash, you could technically do whatever. In a matchup against a character, there's only a couple of ideal follow-ups you actually want to do. And not, like, 10 or 15 things that people want to do. Like, people will try to, like, get you to believe. And, and by the way, this is not to take away from Dragon Ball. Because Dragon Ball does have stuff that I like. Dragon Ball does have stuff that I like. The neutral at high level is very fun, actually, and like a nice level of stress. Okay, I don't want—I didn't want to go too deep in that tangent. Any, any questions? Any questions? This one was. Um, this is probably the thing that bothers me the most when it's like that. How you guys feel? How you guys feeling?